What's happening, everyone? In the prior two videos in this series, we learned about the bubble sort and the selection sort, two relatively simple approaches to sorting. In this video, we'll introduce the last of these simple, yet not very scalable algorithms, the insertion sort. In the beginning of this video, we'll cover the basics and the underlying methodology of the insertion sort. And later, we'll open up a coding editor and implement the algorithm using the Python coding language. Don't be afraid if you don't have experience with Python, as it's definitely one of the most readable coding languages and the content you see in this video will transfer directly over to an implementation in pretty much any other language. As always, if you enjoy the video or find it interesting or informative, consider throwing me a thumbs up. Also take some time to check out the rest of the content on my channel, and if it fits your taste, think about subscribing so you can be notified when I upload new coding videos. So to start things off, similar to the last two videos, we'll first take a look at an animation of the insertion sword in action to help us synthesize some of its higher level features. As we can see in the GIF on the right, a partially sorted portion seems to grow from the left-hand side until it encompasses the entire list, at which point the sorting is complete. What's really happening is that we start the sorted portion with only the element in the first position in the list, we then grow the sorted portion by consuming the next consecutive unsorted element and placing it at its appropriate spot in the sorted portion. The algorithm is called insertion sort because of this exact action. We maintain an sorted and an unsorted portion, slowly taking elements sequentially off the unsorted portion and inserting them at their appropriate places in the sorted portion. When inserting an unsorted element into the sorted portion, we begin by comparing it to the largest sorted element. If it's larger, we simply leave the element in place and go on to the next unsorted element. If the unsorted element is smaller, we then compare it to the second largest sorted element and continue this process until we find the right insertion spot. Once we found the appropriate insertion spot, we shift all larger sorted elements to the right by a single space to make room for the new element, then insert it. Another thing to notice is that it seems like the first quarter or so of the sorting procedure goes by nearly exponentially faster than the last quarter. This is because for the first couple items we insert into the sorted portion, we don't need to perform any comparisons until we find the appropriate spot for the new item. Contrast this to the last couple items in the unsorted portion, which will theoretically have to be compared to every single item in the sorted portion before they find their spot, assuming they're smaller than all the items before. On a quick side note, the slowdown behavior is the exact opposite of what we see in the selection sort. In that case, the last items are sorted faster because it's faster for us to find the smallest item in a short list than to find the smallest item in a long list. And in selection sort, we never need to iterate over the sorted portion, so we don't care that its size is growing. Even though insertion sort slows down as it progresses through its sorting procedure, this actually gives us the benefit that insertion sort can be used as an online sorting algorithm. That is, after we've sorted our list, we have the ability to add new items to be sorted, whereas with selection sort, once the sorting is complete, we can't add items without having to resort the entire array. The last thing to notice in the animation is, similar to bubble and selection sort, insertion sort uses only a single list object, making its memory requirements constant, or big O of 1. On the next slide, we'll transition over to the, looking at the pseudocode for the algorithm so we can relate these higher level concepts to their lower level implementation. So we can see here we're declaring a function named insertion sort that's passed a single unsorted list object A. Inside of the function, we first enter a for loop, which iterates a variable named sorted length from 1 up to the length of the input array. This variable will mark the end of our sorted portion, starting at length 1 because, by definition, we can say that the first item, by itself, could be considered sorted. Recall that any list of length 0 or 1 is, by definition, sorted. On each iteration of the for loop, we first set a variable called next unsorted, equal to the next value from the unsorted portion we wish to insert into the sorted portion. This is the value in the list a at the index equal to the current length of the sorted portion, meaning the next value after the end of the sorted portion. We then set a placeholder variable called insert index equal to the current position of the next unsorted item. We then enter into a while loop where we'll iterate the insert index down through the sorted portion until we reach the appropriate place to insert our item. We'll know we're at the correct location once our new item to be inserted, the value of the next unsorted variable, is smaller than the current item in the sorted portion, since we're iterating over a sorted list in reverse order. Inside the while loop, we'll also perform a shifting action, seen on line 10, to make room for the next unsorted variable to be inserted once we find the correct location. At the end of the while loop, we'll insert our next unsorted value into the place we've left open at the insert index, and once we reach the end of the while loop, we'll know our sorting operation is complete. As we can see in the table, our insertion sort algorithm suffers from exponential time complexity in the average and worst cases, and linear time in the best case. This only really makes it suitable for applications manipulating very small arrays, or those with very stringent memory requirements. As we said earlier, similar to both bubble and selection sort, Insertion sort doesn't require any extra arrays or data structures, making its space complexity constant. The exponential time complexity comes from the fact that if we had an input array sorted in reverse order, we would need to perform comparisons on nearly all items on every iteration, 
and we would have as many iterations as there are items. We'll now move over to a coding editor and implement the insertion sort algorithm using Python. Before we get to the actual coding, I'd like to address some questions I've had in terms of my development environment. I'm using Sublime Text 3 for my coding editor, and to run the code I'm using the built-in Ubuntu terminal application. If you're on OS X, Python should also be pre-installed in your terminal application, but if you're on Windows, you're going to have to install Python separately and adjust your environment variables in the Windows settings to allow you to run Python from the command line. Alternatively, you could just install an IDE such as Eclipse, which should come with Python in its built-in command line. That way you have your coding editor and terminal built into the same application. Now onto the code. The first thing we'll be doing is creating our create array function we'll be using to generate randomized arrays for testing our insertion sort. Switching to terminal, we can see our create array function is working great. We have an array of length 10 where each element is randomly selected in the range of integers from 0 to 50. Now that we have that out of the way, we can begin to write the actual algorithm. The function will be named insertion sort and will be passed a single input array, the array we'd like to sort. Inside the function, we'll first enter a for loop, which will iterate a variable named sort length from 1 up to the length of the input array. Recall that on the first iteration, we treat the first element of the list as the one element in the sorted portion, hence the reason we start iteration at 1. We'll then create a variable named current item to hold the next item in the unsorted portion. On the first iteration, this will be the second element in the array. We then create a variable named insert index and set it equal to the length of the sorted portion. This integer is also the exact index of the current item. The item we'll be inserting in the sorted portion in a second. After declaring those two variables, we'll enter into a while loop, wherein we decrement the insert index until we reach the correct location to insert our current item. On each iteration, as we decrement the insert index, we'll also shift elements to the right to make room for our current item to be inserted. At the end of the while loop, we'll simply insert our current item at the insert index, which will now be the correct insertion location and at the end of the function we'll return the original array, now hopefully in sorted order. We'll now write some lines of code to create a randomized array and print it out. We'll then print it out again after calling the insertion sort function to ensure our algorithm is working. Switching to terminal we can see our function is working great as we have successfully sorted the array. We'll now write a quick function to benchmark the performance of our insertion sort against both the bubble sort and selection sort algorithms we wrote in the prior two videos. For now, I'll just be copy and pasting in the code for the bubble and selection sort functions. If you'd like more information regarding those two, I'd recommend checking out the prior two videos in the series. We'll be testing our three sorting techniques on randomized arrays of length 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000. For each length, we'll record the time taken by all three approaches, and at the end, print out the results in a table format. After switching to terminal and running the benchmark, we can see we definitely have some interesting results. Compared to bubble and selection sort, our insertion sort method is more efficient for all tested input sizes, though selection sort does come in in a close second. So that takes us to the end of this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and now have a better understanding of the insertion sort algorithm. Next up, we'll be covering quick sort and merge sort, which are a bit less intuitive but normally provide even better performance. See you guys in the next one.